Hi there, Carl Brung here with you. Welcome back to my time tunnel and the channel. Feel free to like, subscribe, and let's go behind and I'll tell you what's happening there in a moment. Yes, welcome back. And this time I'm going to look specifically at a very important project that's been taking place in Guyana. It's been going now for over 30 years. And I'm talking about the Iwakrama Rainforest Project, which Guyana really has been proud of and has been doing ever so well. There's a lot about it and a lot has been said about it. And a lot will be done more to encourage people to keep their minds on sustainability. Now, I caught up with Dane Gobin, and Dane is the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of the Wakrama Rainforest Project in Guyana. And to, for those of you who really don't know much about this project, I had Dane explain a little bit more, because you know what? The Rainforest Project, the Iwakrama Project, celebrated 30 years, and 30 years of this project has been doing well. Listen in. So thanks, Karen. Mm -hmm. I'm always a pleasure to be with you and to attend World Travel Market. So ironically enough, uh, this year is the Wakrama's 30th anniversary of Diana's gift to the world. The Wakrama Forest is a 1 million hectare forest reserve that's located in central Diana. Uh, it's a joint effort between the government of Diana and the Commonwealth Secretariat. And in 1989, the then President Desmond presented this gift, the lungs of the earth, to the international community for research into sustainable development. Since then, the program has been supported by almost all the donors and in the international community. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We've also engaged in a lot of commercial activity, but in a sustainable way with certification. So we have tourism, we have sustainable forestry, we've done ecosystem services, and in more recent times, we resuscitated our science program, which is now funded by Exxon Mobil. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, Guyana has found one of the largest oil reserves in the world. Um, I think it was the largest in 2019 and the ninth largest in the world. So we have to now balance this new found wells with the preservation of our forest coverage, mm -hmm. which still represents 82% of Guyana's land mass. Mm -hmm. So essentially, in other words, simpler words, 82% of Guyana's land mass is still under forests. Mm -hmm. And we all know that forests are the lungs of the earth, and we need to actually now establish and maintain that. President Granger is a very, very firm believer in green development. Mm -hmm. So the government of Guyana has actually been able to uh, present a green state development strategy, which is really um, against the background of huge wealth from oil, still maintaining forest cover. So even though obviously you know new wealth like oil will put a lot of pressure on the Anis mm -hmm. forest, but President Granger is a very firm believer that you can in fact have these kinds of development mm -hmm. but still maintain your forest cover. So the green state development strategy was done and launched uh, earlier this year. Um, and one of the cornerstones of that is actually tourism. Because if you can actually use the tourism values from the forest, then you don't have to cut the forest, or you don't have to mine in the forest. And Iwakrama has done all the work, and essentially, you know, there were two broad areas that Iwakrama works cover, mm -hmm. covers, and one of the areas is showing how you could use the forest without losing it. Mm -hmm. And the second is to show that forests are worth more alive than dead. And as I always say, if you can take a healthier forest, I'm sure you can get more tourism value, or you can get more um, ecosystem services, carbon arrangements, mm -hmm. than forestry or mining, then obviously it makes sense to protect it. Mm -hmm. But until you could actually show that preservation values outweigh mining values mm -hmm. and forestry values, it will become an uphill battle. That's not to say that we should stop uh, mining or stop engaging in farming uh, in, in forestry, mm -hmm. but do it in a more sustainable way. Yeah. And I mean, if somebody is going to pay you to keep the forest standing, why would you want to cut it in the forest? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. 30 years of work, community relations, conservation, mm -hmm. research and science, um, species, uh, habitats. Uh, we have the giants of El Dorado, the harpy eagle. 
Um, incidentally, in a couple of weeks uh, at our 30th anniversary celebration, we're launching a 43-minute film, a professional film being done by Germans and funded under the GIZ program, who have been very good friends of the work around. So we'd obviously like to get that film out, mm -hmm. and we're hoping people like you, Carl, and the yes. mission in, in, uh, in the UK can be a conduit for some of these uh, yeah. uh, movies. And so. Great. Um, looking at the average visitor, um, because we know it's a conservation area, um, if anyone wants to visit the Wokrama, do they have to get permission um, or planning permission before they go in? Because also you know there are people who would visit and at the same time even know it's a protected area, still would want to do things. Yeah. Um, unknowingly to yourself, like maybe cutting trees or at the yeah. same time trying to interfere with, with animals that are endangered species, you know. Are these systems in place? I mean, how do you observe that? Yeah. And if the visitor wants to get in, how do they get in there in the yeah. first place? Yeah, so, the Wokrama is the guy that's gifted the work. Mm -hmm. We like people to come in and do everything. Mm -hmm. So we're doing tourism, we're doing science, we're doing community relations, we're doing intellectual property, we're doing research, we're doing all of these things. All we're saying is we like to do them well, we're mm -hmm. using international best practice, and we like to do them with some kind of certification process. Yeah. Um, we're open to visitors, to tourism. Um, over the last few years, it's become increasingly easier to get to Guyana. Mm. Um, as you know, there was a Caribbean airline that actually came to Guyana, but I think a couple of years they stopped that uh, route because yeah. it wasn't economic. But with Guyana's newfound wealth, um, there's a, a number of airlines, including Caribbean Airline, American, I believe people like United and JetBlue have already filed applications. Mm -hmm. So the airlift in Bong, um will be a lot more economic um, and a lot more frequent. When you get into our capital city of Georgetown, you can either travel to Wokrama by road, which is a six-hour drive. And I'm happy to say that the British and the UK government has provided some support to uh, the, the government of Guyana to rehabilitate that road and okay. 72 kilometer kilometers of that Georgetown left them roadway, which left them being close to Brazil, uh, passes through the Wokrama Park. Really? Mm -hmm. So in fact, we just signed off in a request from the Ministry of Public Infrastructure for bridge and process the River, right. which means makes easier access to Wokrama and again, less expensive. Right. Um, so we essentially do that and we have all kinds of things. We have the only canopy walkway, it's a state of the art, it's a very expensive walkway. We have uh, some of the best Amerindian guides because one of the things we do is really to try to enhance <coughs> local community livelihoods. Right. So set up these communities to do things like tourism and forestry and we employ a lot of uh, local Indians. Uh, we help support development of tourism in, in, in communities, mm -hmm. business development training, uh, tour guide training. In fact, we've just, just before I left, uh, the IDB, Inter-American Development Bank, has invited us to submit a proposal mm -hmm. to help enhance community guides yeah. and capacity. So, you know, it's an international effort. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I mentioned that Prince Charles um, is a patron of Iwakrama. In July this year, he renewed his patronage for another five years. Wow. So clearly, people are happy over 30 years with the kind of work we've been doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm really happy, I'd like to really thank everyone involved, including the government of Ghana, and Charles' office, all the high commissioners. It's an international effort. Mm. Um, and uh, after being around for 30 years, it's testament to that we obviously are doing some things right. Very good. There's yes. a lot more work to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the international community, in light of climate change and the big challenges now mm -hmm. with carbon, um, Evo Karama still remains one of the top five places as part of the Guyana Shield, uh, where conservation plays a major role. Great. Dane, obviously that's well said. Um, success to Okrama in the future, and I think this has really put Guyana on the map as well as one of the best um, sustainable uh, countries in the world. And we're doing well. I think there's a lot more to come in the future with people like yourselves, um, with good management. I think no, you definitely. Well. Yeah, you know, as I said, um, over the last 30 years, each successive government of Ghana has supported the Wakrama from its inception. So we are apolitical, and I think all governments of Ghana have recognized the 
value of your property. Yeah. Melanie, because we refer to ourselves as a green heart of Guyana, green heart being a species of Guyana, yes, yes. but green heart also yes. referring to our location because mm -hmm. we're actually really yeah, central Guyana. Mm -hmm. Great, James, it's a pleasure talking Thank with you. you. Carl. We should meet again soon and continue the journey. Thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to say a big thank you to Mr. Dane Gobin for taking time out to talking with you and talking with me, enlightening you too about the Ewok Rama Rainforest Project. This is always a town twist, the Ewok Rama. Yeah, it has been really, really good and very educative. And once again, I'd like to say thank you for looking. Feel free to like and subscribe. And until we meet again, Carl Brown saying it was a pleasure being with you.